broadcast the fourth day. Hello, Porada. Good morning. Uh, so, in Hoffi Krasawi, Evany Hedu, Gareth Jones. I'd like to welcome Gareth with us today. Porada, Bob, Sirisi, Vanna, Atres, Do you have a month in time? And do you know the Cockleit Cymru? Well, my every oh, it's a heavy. Oh, Chef and non do and Sir Flinch and a a do you rain draw? Do you have a month? Yn Llundain er dechrau'r wythdegau, felly dwi'n strygla efo fy Gymraeg gweithio. Mae yn diflannu, mae, mae geiriau'n diflannu, felly dwi oedd y peth dwi am wneud heddiw a diolch i'ch chdi uh, ems am... Um, uh, Beni gario uh, invite gohorth. Gohorth. Gohorth i... Dydych. Mor geiriau'n diflannu. Uh, a gohorth i, I, I wneud hyn. Na'i ti am wneud mor gymaint y fedrau yn Gymraeg, ond mi mwy afrif o fo yn dwyieithog, mwy afrif yn Saesneg, dy meddwl. Brilliant, mae hynna'n siampion. Diolch, Gareth. Croeso. Iawn, ti sy'n fi dechrau? Ie, dwi'n bore. All right, well, na'i dangos um, dipyn bach o fy nghefyn dyr o swedrau. Um, mae gen i lluniau i ddangos ti fyna, fyna, fyna uh, edrychwch ar hyn ble mae'r uh, switch. Ti'n gweld hynny, bawb? Ti'n gweld y, y sgrin? Uh, ble mae'r... Na, ok. Hang on. Mae ffintio bottom i ddangos y sgrin. Nefo, uh, hwn. Boom. Fel na. Ti'n gweld o? Dred. Um, dyma fi... Uh, <laughs> O'n i'n... Uh, deg mlynedd oed, oed dwi'n meddwl. Ten years old. Um, selfie. Cyn uh, oedd gen ni um, uh, cameras ar ffôn. Just camera go iawn. Oedd yn anferth. O'n i'n dal y camera, o'n i'n sefyll, y uh, uh, fyny ddes i gymryd uh, y llun fyna, ar flaen llong yn hwylio dros y môr i Ffrainc, ar trip ysgol am um, penwythnos selfie. Un o'r r- 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 llun gyntaf nes i cymryd erioed yn selfie, wrth gwrs, gyda hen camera. Ac wrth i mi tyfu fyny, uh, oedd gen i diddordeb mewn, Y ti'n gweld y lli, y lli yma? Um, hang on. Mae fo, ie? Dyma fi, rwam, tia... O, un deg dau, dwi'n meddwl, o'n i'n un, un, naw, saith, tri. Dwi'n hynach nad y mam a dy dad, ac efallai dy nain a tai, dy fyd. <laughs> Ond oedd gen i diddordeb mewn awyrennau. Oherwydd, roedd fy'n had yn yr RAF, yn ystod uh, yr Ail Rhyfel Fawr. Uh, nes i tyfu fyny yn uh, adeiladu, ac, wel, cynllunio ag adeiladu awyr ynnau. A o'n i'n hedfan rein, radio controlled, oedd nhw, oedd nhw'n sefyll ar y, ar y, a, y tir, ac hedfan nhw fyny yn yr awyr wrth defnyddio transmitter radio. A roedd, o, a roedd hyn yn um, gweddol cymle oherwydd, estalwn roedd y technoleg dim mor um, sophisticated a yw e heddiw. Mae bawb yn gallu hedfan drones, dyddio hyn, oherwydd. Mae ma drones yn defnyddio technoleg sy'n helpu nhw aros yn yr un lle, yn yr awyr. Ond oedd gen ni uh, y technoleg i wneud hynny, estalwn, felly oedd yn anodd iawn i hedfan Rain. Okay, we're getting in and out of there. He, not just our and I are going. Um, again, engines on in uh, Moderon on in Hedvan on gliders heavy. Do you know what? Hanner for the money, Moil Vamai. Moil Vamai the half mountain, a very mountain Moil and 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 Englemry and Hedvan glider ever than the dad. Okay. Mae'r ei mi newid i, I Saesneg yw yn i, I just esbonio bethau i'ch chdi. Um, ok. Why? You see, I, 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 because of my interest in uh, technology and particularly aviation, I became a television presenter on a science television show called How To, a programme for children that was on ITV for 16 years. 
and I did most of the science things on that show. It was more than just science on how to. We did history, we did tricks, we did art, we did all sorts of things. But I did most of the science because I loved science. I didn't know most of the answers, but I was interested in the questions. I had questions. That's the great thing about science. Science isn't for people who've got the answers. Science is for people like you and me who've just got questions about science. And the best question you can ask is, how? How does something work? Or why? Or what? Or when? Or where? Any word that starts with W is a good question. Let me show you one of my favorite things that we ever, ever, ever did on how to, and it involves a hairdryer. You have to take the end bit off. A lot of hair dryers have these things, these narrow sort of aperture ends off. If you've got a hair dryer like this at home, you can do this yourself. Take that off and you need a ping pong ball. Now, unfortunately, my ping pong ball is the same color as my shirt. So I'm going to have to sort of lean out of the way so that you can see what I'm doing. Watch this. If I turn the hair dryer on, maximum blow, and I hold the ping pong ball over it here, and I let go, what's going to happen? The ping pong ball's going to fly off in that direction, isn't it? Let's see. Look at that! My hair's done. It's floating. Just hanging there. That's incredible. That's because of something called the Benny effect. So Benny is Ben was his first name. That was his last name. Benny. Okay, turn this off. Look at it. See the Mr. Quavy. Ooh, that's hot. Try that yourself at home. Benny was a very interesting guy, very long time ago, who studied the properties of air, the way that air moved. And he observed air pressure. Now, you'll know all about pressure if you've ever been in a ball pool. You ever been to one of those sort of play areas that have got ball pools full of plastic balls? If you dive down into the ball pool, you can feel the ball pool pressing against you on top of you and on the sides. And you can feel it pressing on the side as much as you can on top. So it's not weight, weight is gravity. That's the earth pulling things down. You can feel it pushing on you on the side. And air all around us has pressure too. Air, think of air as tiny, 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 tiny little, like the balls that you get in a ball pool. Molecules, air is made of molecules. So try and imagine here, all those balls of air, those tiny, tiny, tiny molecules of air being blown up by the hairdryer sent up and because they're moving their pressure is lower you know that push that you get on your face from being in a ball pool like that it's not pushing so hard because the air is moving and this is one of the most wonderful things we have ever discovered about air and this is why and how airplanes can fly so you've got a column of air here imagine it's a column of air that's got low pressure but the air on the outside, because it's still, it's the air in the room, that's got higher pressure than this. So you can imagine a sort of a wall of higher pressure air, and it's that invisible wall that's keeping the ping pong ball in place. Isn't that amazing? I could watch that all day. Now, if you've got a very powerful hairdryer, you might just be able to tip your hairdryer to one side. How far? Oh, not very far. If you've got a very powerful hairdryer, you can tip it right the way to one side and it will keep the ping pong ball in place. And if you've got a super powerful hairdryer, you can do it with a beach ball, a big lightweight plastic beach ball. So you come on Panty Mindir Trife, man a shopper or familiar trife, and it's a brunny beach balls. Then with them and um drum yam and an uscam, right? Brunny in sin uscaven. I got skinned and vam, they did that, they ruin our ash la the dread the the choir. Um I was gonna know um hair dryer sin with the gwins and 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 grey yam man bossib need. Beach ball, head van, well now. Okay, 
So that's the first thing I wanted to show you. Hang on, I've dropped my ping pong ball. Let me get it out of the way before I trip up. Oh, by the way, do we are a sayad? Do we are a sayad? Do we even mewn gwirion there that are sayad? Make any screen to all of me. Sing queer. Uh, to his zoom, I'm possible. Uh, Roy Sheen, I'd never on my the machine go down or say that it will hook at home. Um, you two, the Enor Rover, ma, ma, nath Shana, a re probe, Ilancia, are a say that through Pimla Nethernall, uh, nath or a re or compass a say that fell ready control car are better in, um, uh, Mishne Hanner in the middle. And I thought, when do you, but not so on a sayad, and um, and when Daiveg with Durnod here, yeah, I had with a person, what I'm not a sayad, the are a day arma. I got now you two, when do you guski, I'm not not so on a messy card yet or a bechod. She made dig. Poor you two are a sayad, and a couple of years ago, I knew it is a snake. Uh, China sent another probe to the moon, also called U-2-2. And U-2-2 landed on the far side of the moon. Don't let anyone say the dark side of the moon. No, no, no. The far side of the moon. Because every side of the moon gets light sometimes. So some parts are dark, some parts are light. There is no permanently dark side of the moon. So there's a rover. I think it stopped now. But it was driving around on the far side of the moon taking pictures. Fantastic. Anyway, never mind the moon because it's got no air. There's no air on the moon. Planes can't fly on the moon, but they can fly here on Earth. And there's my bit of paper. Hang on, bit of paper. Here's something that you can do. Now, hopefully, you've got a piece of paper somewhere nearby, okay? If you haven't got one, run around now. Go and grab a, a, a letter or a, a, a sheet from a magazine or something. But if you have got a piece of paper, try this. This is amazing, I think. Take your piece of paper like this and give it a little bit of a bend. Now, this curve here is very important. Now, what do you think is going to happen if I blow over the top of the paper? Now, you might guess the paper will go down. Yeah, blow, it'll blow the paper down. I'm not going to blow underneath it. If you blow underneath it, it might lift it. Look. Yeah, so if you blow on top, the paper's going to go down, right? Let's find out. What's your guess? Make your choice now. Is it going to go up? Is it going to go down? Is it going to stay the same? Is it going to wobble? Is it going to fly off? Let's see what it does. Is it better? Man, Cody. Why? Why would blowing on top of a piece of paper make it go up? Well, it's that same thing. It's what's called the Bernoulli principle. Mr. Bernoulli, who was studying air, gave this uh, a word to help us explain it. And it's also called the Coanda effect. Now, the Coanda effect is a word that we use to explain how air behaves when it hits a curved surface. When air hits a curved surface, it follows it. It kind of sticks to it. It loves the curves. I'm air. Oh, how weird do we? Oh, do we in half yawn? Oh, oh, uh, very curved surfaces. I mean, then we go right. I love curved surfaces. I love them. Oh, I love them. I want to stick to them. I want to cuddle them. That's pretty much how it works. The air sticks to the surface. But because the air is going in that direction and it sticks to the surface, the surface sticks to the air. It's like glue. One thing sticks to another, the other thing sticks to the first thing. So it lifts up like that. And that is the principle on how planes fly, really. If you look at an aeroplane, a full-size aeroplane, like the jumbo jet you might go on holiday, it's the top surface of the wing that's doing all the lifting. People think it's the bit underneath like it's sitting on the air. No, it's the top side. Because the air hits the front of a, a wing. You look at a wing, it's shaped like that. I'll show you a wing shape. A 
proper wing is it's not quite right it's something like that and the wind the air blows the front of the wing sticks to the top and it's the top that sucks the plane into the air now i know this because when i was little i built a glider that had a really smooth top surface to the wing but the bottom side it wasn't even there it wasn't shaped like that it just had ribs and it was the top side that did all the lifting i love planes can you tell and would you like to learn how to make a plane because i've got a design for the best well a classic paper plane now let, let's hope we can do this right i'm going to share my ski, screen and show you a bit of video so let's get the screen up um hang on hang on i need to press a button that's your share screen and now i've just covered my share screen button isn't that typical hang on stand by it's coming man dod hang on let's see your hun at uh let me share screen button now i'm ever i'm ever uh hun to shake well I didn't even well, Gareth. It's not showing for us. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Hang on. Sorry, I thought you said you were seeing it. I <laughs> beg your pardon. <laughs> sorry, I'm the, uh, the technology issues. And I cheer your etta. Um, this is the screen that you want, isn't it? Oh, not, not that video. Not that one. Hang on, I'll get the right video going. It's all going terribly wrong. I love it when things go wrong. It's better than when things go well. Let's try again. <laughs> this is the first clip. Are you seeing? No, I'm not seeing the screen. No. I don't think it's sharing. Where's it gone? Hang on. <laughs> it's vanished. Bear with me, guys. Don't worry. The wonders of lives, Helly. <laughs> yeah. Hang on. My, I've got the thing playing in one ear. I can't find the screen to close it. Hold on, got to do some computer things here. Bear with me. Bear with me. Uh, films and TV. End task. Right. Right, I stopped talking in my head now, so I, I, I can play it in the right window. Open with VLC player. Share screen. And the screen I'm sharing is this one. Paper you see that plane. Now? Dart okay. design. But I'm going to give mine a dipping bar of a... How to make the classic paper plane. Okay, this is oh, how you make it, we can classic see. Classic paper plane. Why does it do that? Okay, stand by, guys. Plane. Let's try again. Uh, it's when I close the screen and restart it. it Don't worry, I was having this yeah. trouble yesterday. I think Zoom's having a moment. It's, um, it's slightly frustrating. Now I can't find my control screen. Hang on, Alt-Tab. Uh... That's the screen I want. Share screen. Share screen. Tig well, honey? Not yet. Oh, hang on. Started sharing. Yes, we see it. The dart design. Okay, but I'm going to yeah. give Mo a dipping bark of a twist, a little bit of a twist. Now, I've got um, plain white paper. It always helps if you're showing people how to make things out of paper to have paper that's plain on one side and coloured on the other. But I haven't got any coloured paper, so I made some of my own. I just painted this grid on with a, a red felt marker you can do the same if you want so start off with uh, a piece of paper with a color side if it's got color down like that and fold it in half lengthways now the important thing is when you're working with paper to make models is to do it as tidily as you can get it right to the edge right to the edge and then give it a good strong crease Start gentle, then make it strong at the end like that. Sharp crease. So it's even, because the more even your paper plane, the better it will fly. Okay, next thing you need to do is to fold from this corner along that line there. So take this corner, bring it to the middle. You'll probably find if you pick it up there a little bit like that, you get a crease. You go down to the line so it's nice and tidy and parallel. Well, honey, like that. And then do the same on the other side, of course. 
There you go. Now, we do the same thing again. You take this edge, and put your finger there, and bring this edge all the way down parallel to that line, or on that line, in fact. Well, honey, and then give it a good sharp crease along that edge, all the way down. Do the same on the other side. Bring this edge down to there. They should line up exactly the same. The closer they are together, the more accurate your plane, the more straight it will fly. There you go. Nice sharp crease. Right, and then turn it sideways like that. Now, we're going to create the wing. Now, a big mistake a lot of people do when they're making paper planes is they take this edge here and they fold it down to there, like that. So you've got quite a narrow wing when it comes up like that. That's more, this is the fuselage. The body of a plane is called a fuselage. This is the wing. You need a bit more wing than that. So come more than halfway down. So the wing overlaps the fuselage. Can you see? And it's important that this height at the back here is the same height as the fold at the front here. So the way to achieve that is to find a straight line at the back can you see how this is a straight line now? Not like that, not like that, but like that. A nice straight line. Start at the back, give it a crease. It should be straight all the way to the front. Well, actually, that's not very straight. Look at that. I can do better than that. I can fix it. There we go. That's fixed that. And then flip over the other side and do the same. Find the height at which you bent it at the back, the height at which you bent it at the front, and then give it a crease. Now, there we are, We're almost there. Look, this is the classic paper plane design. Nothing wrong with that, it'll fly really well. But what I like to do with my paper planes is make them look like Concorde, one of the greatest planes ever built. Concorde was a plane that was supersonic. It flew faster than sound and it had a vertical fin. Now, it helps if you've got a pencil and you can draw the fin. Now, the fin on an aeroplane, if you imagine, if you hold it the right way up, the fin slopes like that, doesn't it? Like the wings, they slope back. That's to help it cut through the air when it's traveling at very high speed. So if it's sloping that way at the top, it means it's sloping that way at the bottom. Do you see what I mean? So I'm going to draw in a line, a guide line like that, and then either tear along that line, or use a pair of scissors, and if you're not very good with scissors, get someone to help you to cut along that line up to the crease like that, and then turn it inside out. Watch this. Pop like that, and you get a classic paper plane but now with the fin that makes it look like concord and it'll help it fly straight having a vertical fin like that will make sure that the plane flies in a straight line and if you tidy up those creases so they're really sharp the straighter the edges the straighter the plane will fly and then if you really want because concord used to have a nose that could dip down like this because Planes that have got a delta wing like this, this swept back wing, when they're flying very fast, fly like that, like this. But when they're flying slowly, they have what's called a nose up attitude like that. They actually fly like that. And of course, you, when you slow down for landing, if you're sitting at the front, you can't see the runway. You're looking forward, you can't see the runway. So Concorde had a very clever thing with the nose folded down. It really is a bit a full-size aeroplane that had a nose that pointed downwards. So I'm going to give my plane a bit of a fold down like that, fold it that way, fold it the other way on that same line and then turn it inside out. And there we go. That is now a model of Concorde flying at slow speed with its nose tilted down. 
Fantastic! Na Emma wedi wedi in hefyd, gobeithio dach chi wedi wedi in dy hun adre, uh, ag os ti ddim wedi wneud o paid a poeni. Diana, ma, ma, ma'n hedfan! Brilliant! And don't worry, if you didn't quite get the chance to follow me making that plane, hopefully I can get those videos to Emma, and Emma you can make them available to everybody so that they can uh, they can copy them and watch them in their own time. Now, here's my plane. The same one that I built in the kitchen. We call this kitchen sink science because the kitchen is the best place to have a home laboratory for lots of reasons. You've got a kitchen table that's nice and flat. That you can build very straight aeroplanes on. You've got a sink and you'll see why the sink is useful. I'm going to do something a bit messy in a bit. And um, and if you do spill any liquids, because sometimes science involves liquids, because liquids and air are both fluids. And the way that air behaves is the same as the way that liquids behave. They're both fluids. So here's a, a plane that I built in my laboratory, my, my, my gegging, my kitchen. And if you test fly your plane and it dives down towards the ground, this is what you do. Bend up, this, they call this the trailing edge. This is the leading edge, meaning the front. This is the trailing edge. These are proper aerodynamic terms. And if you take the trailing edge and just give it a little twist up like that, just a little bit twist up and throw it again. If it then goes up like that, then you've bent it too much. Bend it down, bend it down a little bit. What you're trying to do is to get it just to climb a little bit, not to do a loop, just to climb a little bit. Because this sort of planar wing, this straight wing, the only way it will fly is if you give it thrust. Now, planes fly because you, you give them thrust, they have to overcome gravity. Gravity, the earth, big old fat earth, is sucking things down and saying, come here, I can't, I'm really pulling down. Actually, gravity is rubbish. It's really weak. It's not as strong as magnetism. Magnetism, if magnetism and gravity had a fight, magnetism would win. It's true. You take two magnets, you can make one float on top of the other, or pick one up, beating gravity. And the gravity is that big, and the earth is as big as a planet. Anyway trim your plane that's what it's called if you trim your plane up if it dives and if it goes up too much down and that will fly as long as you give it enough thrust the lift is the um the, the um uh, what's the word i'm thinking of but lift is fighting gravity it's forcing the plane up gravity is pulling it down lift is forcing it up but because those air molecules are rubbing against the surface of the wing, they create fi friction. You know, if you rub your hand on your face like that, rub two hands together, they get hot, don't they? Try it now. Your hands get hot. That's friction. And it's exactly the same. It doesn't get hot. Well, not unless you're going really fast like Concorde. In fact, Concorde, when it traveled at um, 1600 miles per hour, 1,600 miles per hour, it got so hot that it got bigger. You know, if you heat things up, if you heat metal up, it expands. And the friction of the air on Concorde made it expand a little bit. It got slightly bigger. Then it got down to earth again. It cooled down. Now, I flew on Concorde only once from New York to London, right up there in the cockpit. And we travelled faster than the speed of sound. So if, you, if you've ever been in a a football pitch and you hear someone kick a ball over the other side of the football pitch you sort of hear you see the ball being kicked then you hear Bleh! half a second later don't you that's because it takes a long time for the sound to travel from where it is to you it travels at 630 something miles per hour and concord travels at more than double that so if i'd have left if i before i got on concord in new york if i'd shouted to Britain, ma'am, do we do that for everyone? Ma'am, I'm coming home now. I got in Concord, I flew here, I could have arrived here, and if my voice was loud enough, I could have heard my voice coming after me saying, ma'am, do we do that for everyone? Fortunately, my voice wouldn't have been loud enough to reach across the 3,000 miles of the Atlantic. 
I always like to imagine that's what could happen. Anyway, Concorde, classic paper plane. Huh. There wasn't a wall there, that would have flown really nicely. But now here's a design for an even better paper plane. This paper plane is something that takes half the time to make of that classic dart and will fly at least twice as good. Now, what I have to do is find the right bit of media for you. Hang on a second. Uh, bear with me. I've got button pressing to do. Uh, it's on my desktop. This is probably the easiest way of doing this, I'm hoping. Uh, yes, found it. Uh, okay, this is an indoor flyer. This is designed to fly indoors. Not only is it the simplest paper plane you can make, it's actually one of the best flying paper planes in the world. Let's hope this works. Can you see this? Or can you hear it? No, it's not doing screen share yet. You're not seeing it? Okay, no. hang on. Uh, let me fix that for you. Let me fix this. Uh, I'm sorry about this, people. Don't worry at all. We can get there. Uh, We've got uh, our planes to play with in the meantime. We're okay. Yeah, I'm trying to find my... Um, trying to find my um, controls. They seem to have vanished. Bear with me. Oh, here we are. Here we are. Hang on. Here we go again. Share screen. Share that screen. Share. Think well done, Juan. There we go. The simplest paper plane I know. It couldn't be easier, this one. This is how you do it. Start off. Do your chor, in ochor, get a lliw, ochor arall, and go in. So turn it over so that the white side is up. And then give it a fold along the long edge at the top like this about the width of your thumb say fold it back and again make sure it's the same on this side and that side yeah nice squeeze down and then do the same again so that's two folds and then another fold three should do it depending on how big you've made it if you made them smaller give it four but you're looking to reduce the size of the piece of paper by half so we've come all almost down to the halfway point of the paper there's the halfway stop just before the halfway so once you've done that fold it in half now this time fold it so the color side is up so come here over here nice crease in the middle and you've almost finished it it's amazing just a few folds but we have to do two more things first of all give it a keel this is a fuselage the body of a plane so we're just going to give that a bit of a fold so you get something to hold it by like that turn it over do the same on the other side like that Now, it doesn't really look very much like a plane, it looks more like a bird, it's got wings. But to help it fly in a straight line, we need to give it a vertical flying surface. So, we're going to do that at the tips of these wings. So, fold the tips up like that. Not very high, about the width of, say, the thumbnail. Right, nice and vertical. Arg, ararach, ararach, hevid. Well then, and that, would you believe, is all you have to do. And this is a superb indoor glider. And here's mine. Can you see? And yours. I can see Emma's made one as well. Have you made one at home? I hope you could follow those instructions. It is one of the simplest paper planes you can make. And this paper plane is designed to fly slowly. Now, did you see the other plane? Let me show you. What have I done with this? Concorde. It's crashed over here. Hold on. Concorde, very pointy, designed to go very, very fast. This 
glider has got a straight edge at the front designed to fly slowly. And so when you fly this paper plane, don't give it a big shove, just give it a gentle push. And here's a tip, don't throw it off either. Just throw it, not level, but slightly down, but a, a solid shove. And you don't throw it, it's a shove and let go. Shove and let go. And actually, I wonder if I can make it fly here. Let's see, we've got enough room? Things don't fly on the moon, there's no air, but I'm not really on the moon, so this should fly. Let's see if I can make it fly towards you. Here we go. Ready? Start up. Three, dive, you. Okay, that's trimmed terribly. That means it's got too much up so at the back end. So we turn the trailing edge down. Try again. Ready? Oh, what's going wrong here? That's terrible. Too much up. More down, more down, more down. Yeah, Emma's having the same trouble with hers. You, I bet you are too. Let's try again. Okay, wow, wow. Something's gone wrong with my plane. I've been flying this all yesterday. It needs a lot more turning down at the trailing edge at the back end. And it will fly perfect. There you go. Hey, that's it. Yeah. The important thing is, I think they call it a reflex trailing edge. Bend the trailing edge down like that. And it will definitely, definitely headland. Perfect. And it was actually a design like that that held the world record for a paper plane. It flew something like 69 meters, which is like the full length of a great big aircraft hangar or a basketball court huge distance it just kept going just kept going just kept going now how are we doing for time do you want another paper plane do you want to learn another paper plane or should we move on to something else another paper plane or something else emma you choose um, i can't hear you let's, okay. let's have something else let's see okay. what else you can do all right, I'll show you. I'll show you this first. Look at I'll, look at this. We're not going to make this because it takes about twelve minutes to make this. But look at that! Ooh. Isn't that one of the coolest paper planes you ever saw? It's designed by someone called Jason Merrill, who is an expert in making paper planes. And I've shot a little video on how to make this, but it's a bit tricky. It requires a little bit of concentration. So what I'll do is I'll make that video available to Emma and Emma, you can make it available to you guys. So you can follow those instructions in your own time because it will mean that you need to pause a little bit. But I think that's amazing. It looks like a proper jet fighter, that doesn't it? And it does fly, but you've got to give it a real, a real hard throw. Oh, sorry, <laughs> did it just crash in your living room? Okay. Right then, you're going to like this. This is... This is one of the best things I think I've ever done. I, I did it on how to, I did it on another program I did called The Big Bang. And I think I even did it on a TV show I presented called Tomorrow's World, TV shows. But I have refined the technology and now this is something that you can do at home as well. If it was a how, it would be called, how do you make smoky donuts? Hmm. Do you like donuts? Who doesn't like donuts? I'm not talking about the round ones with uh, strawberry jam in the middle. No, no. I'm talking about the donuts that are more like polo mints, you know, with a big hole in the middle. And that shape is called a torus. So how do you make a torus, that shape, out of smoke? Here's how. You need a bottle. Right. Oh, can you? It vanished. Look, the bottle vanishes because it's green. Uh oh. I'll have to hold it in front of me. I never thought of that. Now, I've got an ordinary water bottle and I've cut the bottom off. So, if you're not very good with sharp scissors, get someone to help you who's very good with sharp scissors and cut the bottom off a bottle. And I've stretched a balloon over it. Right. That's just an ordinary party balloon also green, which I cut the end off like that and took this bit and stretched it over the bottle. Now it has to be really quite tight. Then there's one more thing you have to do. 
you have to make a tiny, oops, sorry, microphone. Can you see there's a tiny, 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 tiny hole there, right? You can make a couple of those. One's probably enough. Then you need to fill your bottle with smoke. Now, smoke's not the nicest stuff in the world. You don't want to be breathing smoke. But if you want a source of smoke that's reasonably safe, and your mum and dad or whoever looks after you is a bit of a hippie, then they've got just the thing. Incense sticks, right? Joss sticks, we used to call them. What you do is, oops, making a bit of a mess here, but, you know, your mum and dad might light them and stick them in a stand and they give off a little bit of smoke and they also make a nice smell in the house. So the trick is to take, I'd say, two or three of these, stand them in some tack glass, blue tack, right? Hang on. I've got your bottle. Where's your bottle? Oh, it's behind me. Hold on. Stand them in a lump of tack glass, then put a bit of toilet roll right? A, the, the card from the centre of a toilet roll with a couple of slots cut in it. To stand. They go on the, uh, the tack glass on your table in the kitchen. You put that over it like that. Now those slots are very important. They allow air in. Then take your bottle and stand your bottle. Get someone to light the uh, incense sticks and drop your bottle on top. Now you've got enough room for the air to go in through these slots. Otherwise Without air, those joysticks will just go out. But if they burn long enough, they will fill your bottle with smoke. Once you've seen that your bottle is full of smoke, you can make smoke rings. Right, let's see if I can find the video for you. Stand by. Um, it's here somewhere. Here we go. Smoky donuts. Just going to pause that. Find a way of sharing the screen by pressing all the right buttons, I hope, in the right order. And let's try that. Are you seeing that? Yes. Yeah. You are. Okay. Now, watch this. I can talk over this. Here's my smoke cannon. It, my bottle is full of smoke. And if you tap, look at that. Tiny smoke rings. Can you see them little donuts of smoke that come out of the bottle? Oh, that was a good one. Went right towards the lens. Look, they're sort of turning back on themselves. And the reason that smoke behaves like this is very much the same reason that planes fly. All the smoke is, is a way of seeing the air molecules and how they behave. And when you tap, when I tap the back of my smoky donut cannon there, a little ball of air takes the smoke with it and it pops out of the hole at the front. Now, the smoke in the middle of the ring can travel really quickly. But I'll, I'll show you that again. But the smoke on the outside of the ring is rubbing against the bottle. Friction. It's slowing it down. So on the outside, the smoke is turning backwards because it's slowed down. And on the inside, it's going faster. So it starts turning, and that, that, that twisting turning is called a vortex. And you see them on planes. You get vortices coming off. Vortices is more than one vortex. Spinning off the wingtips of planes. If you've ever been on holiday on a plane, when it goes through damp air, you can see the vortices spinning off. And that's because of the difference in pressure. It's high pressure and low pressure coming up against each other. And look, those vortices a spinning. I'll show you it one more time because it's worth doing. Now, I'm doing it against a black background so you can see it. It's much easier to see with your eyes than it is with video. So all you need is a bottle, a plastic bottle with the bottom cut off, a balloon that's had the neck cut off and stretched over the bottom, and a source of smoke. And the best source I found are incense sticks. Ask your mama, dad, or whoever looks after you if they've got any incense sticks. And with a bit of practice, a bit of tapping like that, you can make a smoky donut cannon. Tap, 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 and out it comes. See if we can get a last couple. Can you see them floating in the air? There's a couple. That one there floating. Oh, look at that one. Look at this one. 
but it's one floating there. Can you see it? And here comes another one. And what I like to try and do is make one big one, then fire another little one right the way through it. Great fun. Smoky donuts. Right, thank you. Is that gone now? Is that picture gone? Can you see me again? Good. Yeah. We can see you. Hooray. Because I can't quite see what you're seeing here. It's not entirely clear to me. I need more screens. Right, smoky donuts. Hmm. We've got 15 minutes left. Shall I show you some more fluids? But this, this is a bit of a wet fluid. And this is a fantastic trick that you can challenge your mum or dad to, right? Or any of your friends who don't know the secret. This is a, a trick on how to empty a bottle quickly. And once again, I did this in my Labordi, in my Gegin. So here we go. Uh, let me see if I open this up for you. And uh, I need to find my share screen button. Stand by. It's coming. Uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Share screen. It's in Gweldon Ehems. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, this, this is all about fluids because fluids, water, smoke, air, it's all the same stuff in different thickness. And here's a great test I did in my kitchen yesterday that you can do too. All you need is a bottle full of water and a sink. Watch this. Here's a how for you. How quickly can you empty a bottle? Here's a bottle full of water up to that line there. How long does it take me to empty it? See if you can time it yourself by counting at home. Here we go, ready? Three, two, one. One elephant, two elephant, three elephant, four elephant, five elephant, six elephant, seven elephant, eight elephant, nine elephant, ten elephant, ten elephants. Each elephant is a second long. Did you know that? It takes a second to say elephant. It took 10 seconds to empty that bottle. So let's see if I can hurry things up. I'll fill it up again. So it's filled up exactly the same amount as it was before. Let's be scientifically accurate, filled to that level. Here we go. How many elephants will it take this time if I give it a good shake to help the water come out more quickly? Barod, ready, three, die, in, one elephant, two elephants, three elephants, four elephants, five elephants, six elephants, seven elephants. Okay, seven and a half elephants. It's a lot of elephants. But I reckon I can do it even quicker than that with a very, very clever technique. Fill it up to the same level. Here we go. Watch this, right? Filled, it's filled to there. Bad on, here we go. Three, die, in. One, elephant. Two, elephant. Three, elephant. Four, elephant. Five, elephant. Five elephants. It took five seconds to empty that bottle. How? I'll show you. The trick is, when you put the water in the bottle, well, not when the water goes in the bottle, you've got a full bottle of water. The trick is, for water to come out of a bottle, air has to go in. And the air can't come in because the water's going out, plugging up the whole hole at the end. When you do it like that, that's why you get that glub, glub, glub sound, globs of air. But if you want the water to go out quickly, give the bottle a quick spin like that, and you create a sort of a whirlpool. Look, can you see? I don't know if you can see, maybe you have to come closer. Come now you can see it. You can see it, can you? Brilliant. Come really close and you can see I've created a whirlpool of water in the bottle. Can you see that? And that whirlpool has got a gap in the middle. So the air goes in the middle and the water comes out. And that's how quickly you can enter your bottle. Yep, it's true. It works. I don't know. You, have you ever been on a, a roundabout in a playground? If you're on a roundabout, the faster you go, the more it throws you out. It's trying to throw you away from the center. And when you spin a bottle and the technique, where's my bottle? Uh, hang on, I can, use it. I can use this bottle to show you. The technique is this. You hold the bottom bottle, but do that shape with the top bottle. Make it go round and round and round and round and round and round. And what you do is you slosh the water around the outside of the bottle. And as the water gets thrown to the outside, it leaves a gap in the middle. And that gap in the middle is the ventilation. 
so the water can pour out the outside and the air can go in the inside. And in fact, Formula One cars use that technique to put fuel in a car, race cars. They don't refuel in Formula One anymore. They used to, but they do in other race cars. And even aircraft as well. When they put fuel into an aircraft to help the fuel go in more quickly, they've actually got two hoses. It's a hose within a hose. It's almost like having a, imagine if I put a straw in the middle of that hose. So the fuel comes on the outside and the air can go back in through the inside. And the faster the air goes in, the faster the fuel comes out and goes into the fuel tank of the car. And it's exactly the same for emptying a bottle. So you can challenge your friends, get two bottles exactly the same, and say, I'll race you to empty the bottle. Ready, steady, go. And of course, they'll start shaking it to try and get it to come out. All you have to do is give the top a spin like that, create that whirlpool, all the water goes to the outside, and you get a vent in the middle so the air can go in and the water can come out. And I guarantee you will beat them every time because you cannot change the laws of physics, as a very famous engineer on Star Trek once said in a Scottish accent. Okay, how are we doing for time? Ten minutes, Ems. I've still got a couple of things to show you. A little bit risky, though, you see. We've got ten minutes, and if these go wrong... I make a terrible, terrible mess in my living room. Now, you should never attempt these in your living room. If you're going to attempt these, do these outside or in a gegin, your labardi, your gegin. The first one is this. Terrible stuff. Fizzy pop. Don't drink fizzy pop cans. Not good for you. Maybe once in a while as a treat, you know. A very special treat, but definitely not every day. Not even every two days or even every three days, but every now and again, a very special treat. A can of fizzy pop. And what you must never do with a can of fizzy pop, can you hear the stuff in there? What you must never, ever, ever do with a can of fizzy pop is shake it up, shake it up, shake it up, and then open it. Because what's going to happen? It's going to spray everywhere isn't it okay here's a bit of insurance for me just in case this goes wrong if anyone ever gives you a can of fizzy pop and they say yeah and they shake it up like that first and you really want to open it you really want to drink it but you can't because it's going to go everywhere this is what you do and i'm promising like there's no tricky i'm not swapping cans this is the can that i've shaken up with fluid Someone gives you a can, get a spoon like this and tap it three times. Now, in theory, if I open this now, I'm not going to get soaked. Let's see. You ready? Barod, three, dive in. There's a little bit of a fizz. How about that? And this is my very special treat. For getting that right. Mm. Wow, so much sugar. Oh. Ah. But do you know why that works? Because when you shake up a can full of bubbles like that, because it's full of carbon dioxide, that's what makes fizzy drinks fizzy. It's those bubbles of gas. They all gather around the top. They expand into that lower that, that that bit at the top of the of the can that doesn't have liquid in it it's all gas the bubbles are ready to burst as soon as you open up they burst but if you tap it three times they burst inside the can and so you can open it without it spraying everywhere it works every time but just in case have a flannel handy or a, a, a cloth or a towel and do it in the kitchen or do it in the garden. Okay, we've almost finished. Shall I do one more risky thing, Ems? Yes? Do you like me doing risky stuff in my living room? Don't you do this in your living room? Because sometimes things do go wrong. And if they go wrong, a gag in the affair with that in a dot, nid and a lolva. Yeah, okay. 
slightly mucky glass. I'm sorry about that. Our dishwasher makes our glasses a bit less than perfectly transparent, a bit opaque. Uh, it's not dirty, it's just a bit of a lime scale buildup. We have very hard water in London. It's full of lime powder and that makes things a bit, they look a bit scruffy, but they're all right, they're perfectly safe. And here's some water. Now, I know it looks pretty mucky. It's just clean water that I've added a little bit of Ribena to so that you can see it, just a splash of Ribena. And I'm going to fill up my glass as close to the top as I possibly can. And I'm going to get a postcard, a Beano postcard as it goes, and put it on top of this glass here. And turn it upside down. Now, what do you think will happen if I let go of that card? The card's going to fall off, push down by the weight of the water, and make a big mess in the room, or on top of my head. Here we go. Ah! Isn't that amazing? Why does that happen? What's happening here? It's air pressure. The air pressure in this room is greater pushing on that large area of card than all the weight of the water in that glass. Try it yourself. You need a glass that sort of size and a postcard that covers it completely. And I promise you, there is no glue, no trickery. It's just air pressure and fluids. I love Guidonio. Science, engineering, physics, biology, chemistry. I had some fantastic teachers in school. One who was from Bangor, his name was Gomer Davis, and he was my physics teacher. And Gomer, see if I can find this for you. Not only was Gomer um, one of the best teachers I ever had, he was actually the first person, hang on if I can find this for you, he was the first person ever to film me. Where are we? Uh, here we go. If I share this screen. We made a film together in 1937. Was 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 there was a plan to um, change the school day where we would all go in at 6.30 in the morning and go home at lunchtime. This was Save Energy because in 1974 there was an energy crisis.
1976, in fact. And I hope you enjoyed that. But everything else, apart from that film that you saw today, was science fact. The Olchenwald Yau. Now, if you want to see some more science, here's a quick plug. Here's the program I used to do, How To. That's me, Carol Vorderman, who is from Prostatin, and Fred Dynage, my great friend. We did that program together for seven years, but Fred and I carried on doing it with some new women for 16 years. It stopped in 2005. And if you want to see old episodes of How To, you can. They're on Amazon Prime Video. If you've got Amazon Prime Video, if you're lucky enough to have it on your computer, on your telly at home, the first four or five years of How To are on there. And as we used to say at the end of How To, you know, that's how fluid and pressure works. And that's how oh, for, now. for now. Thank you, Ems. I know Emma used to watch me on How when you were a little girl. I did when I was little. That's what made me like science. I used to watch How To. So... The Alchemvari, I'm a Guafaviad, he shared out Gita Baub. And I'm going to like Ak and Sisneg on the Sean a path, Moya Bushig and the Moidi, with Onya. The Alchemvari, and thank you for listening, everyone. The Alchemvari, and thank you, everyone. We will be sharing some of these videos. And if you've got pictures or videos of your paper aeroplane and you want to show us, do share them with us on our Facebook or tag us on Twitter and Instagram. We'd love to see them and see how you got on. Hoi, Ron. Vierde Macaron. Ta-da, Baub. Ta-da.